Clubhouse member video and is a part of the ongoing Force for Good class series. To learn more about this ongoing series, please visit TibetHouse.us. One way you can tell whether you're a Buddha or not is if you think you're in the moment, you're not Buddha. <laughs> Unless that moment includes every single infinite past moment that you are ever in, and every conceivable possible future moment that you can be in, and not only yourself, but everyone else with you. So Trivanya means present in all three times. So that is why Buddha, although to us it seems like he attained nirvana and broke his bodhisattva vow, he became a Buddha and left us whatever. What, was, what were you when Buddha was... It became Buddha under the Bodhi tree 2,500 years ago. Actually, you might have been a mouse. The reason that the mouse is the first animal in the 12 animal cycle of the Tibetan and Chinese calendar is that mice are smart. They know where a little jewel is or a little piece of cheese or something. So they, oh, there's some guy teaching the Dharma. That's going to be really good. So the first animal to come to the Buddha's teaching was a, was a mouse, a field mouse, you know. The mouse came running up. Oh, what, what's he teaching? Unfortunately, and even actually, no, a mouse could understand the, the Dharma from Buddha because Buddha would be heard by a mouse in mouse language. That's part of being a Buddha. Buddha because Buddha would be present in mouse consciousness, and mouse would perceive the Four Noble Truths as no cheese, cause of no cheese, too much personal greed, and then cheesehood. Ultimate infinite cheese. That would be nirvana. And then the path would be realistic view about that cheese. Down to mindfulness of cheese, down to samadhi on cheese. Eightfold path. In mouse language. That's right. <laughs> then the ox is the next one who arrives, and then the tiger. Anyway, never mind. So, ji So, uh, so but Kalachakra, then Buddha shows a body to us that is made of all time. You know, the fingers, the, the 360 days of the lunar year are his joints of his 24 hands, you know, you know, the three joints on each finger, so the, the, et cetera. You know, everything is like an aspect of time. And so he's showing, that, so Kala Chakra, therefore to the chakra, the wheel, means machine. So actually, Kala Chakra really means time machine. And in that sense of the sort of two truths, the time part is the absolute. And the absolute then is the non-dual with the relative, which is the machine. And the machine is not like something that you travel around in time in. The machine is the universe. The Buddha shapes that into a machine of evolution of beings to evolve toward their own freedom from suffering. And, to, and in their perception of those beings, they think that takes them a long time of evolution. But from Buddha's perspective, he already sees where they're going to get. And because he's not a create, he didn't create, he didn't create the universe to start of ignorance, but he creates the Kala Chakra machine, which reshapes the universe of ignorance into a universe of m maximizing the freedom from ignorance, if you follow that which I think you can. I think I did. <laughs> and, right? So that's a time machine. That's, what, that's why it really is the time machine Buddha. But it's time is the machine. When we hear time machine, we think of H.G. Wells or that movie where the guy has the dial goes brrrr, you know, goes here and there. Has to travel in something because we are thinking of a non-emptiness way that, that, that the flow of time is absolute. You know, that there's no relativity about time. Time just has to be absolute. I mean, there's relativity in your experience of it, but it's a flow that, you know, therefore, you can't change the past, for example. Whereas, of course, you can change the past. We change it all the time. And, uh, and when we are Buddhas, we will change the past. We will definitely do that. That's what Buddhas do. So, therefore, the Kala Chakra and the language of the Kala Chakra for example, in the first chapter, in the language of the Kala Chakra, <clears throat> the Kala Chakra Buddha is sometimes called the Adi Buddha, which means like the primal Buddha, primordial Buddha. Adi means first. 
And uh, um, it's the closest to a theistic or a monotheist. Well, no, all Buddha is called the Devati Deva. Even in the Hinayana, they call him Devati Deva, the god beyond the gods. Because when he went into the ancestral temple, I think I mentioned this in an earlier class, when his father took the baby into the Hindu temple, the, the Vedic temple, it wasn't Hindu yet, they called it the Vedic temple, to greet the temple of the ancestors, the deities in the, in the temple got down off, the, off their pedestals, came over and paid homage to the Buddha, and then they went back to becoming statues. So then the god said, wow, this guy is a god beyond the gods, a deva, ati deva, the god of the gods, something like that, which is therefore one of the original names of Buddha. So they always had that idea, but it's really graphically made. And, and therefore, it's not surprising if some Buddhists in history, I think they did, they ended up like almost getting into like an absolute, almost a monotheistic thing about Kalachakra and thinking somehow Kalachakra created the world, which he didn't. But you create the world, you have the experience of creating a world when you practice on Excel Yoga Tantra, if any of you do, when you do a sadhana. And a sadhana is where you go into the, you completely reshape all the energies of the world and you create a community where you are all the members of the community in that 722 deities. And, uh, and, and who are all in the community and they're also there all around constituting the world. Now. This video was brought to you in part generous support of the Tibet House U.S. membership community. To learn more about the benefits of Tibet House membership, please visit Tibet House U.S., including invites to special trips to study Buddhism up close and personal with Robert Thurman during his annual geographic expedition trips. Trips in 2018 include Mongolia and Bhutan. To learn more, visit BobThurman.com.